Hello, my name is Greeno. I make luckism videos mainly based on fitness and martial arts, but today I'm featuring on the great Abood's channel to talk about the luckism stock market. The stock market is a relatively simple concept, a place where respective buyers and sellers meet over the matter of stocks, forex and even commodities. The luckism stock market is all about different characters and their values. For example, in the recent chapters, Joe Hans Young's value may rise from 1200 due to him doing well against Gun, while at the same time Yun Young's value may fall from 1400 to 900 due to him getting body. This is usually caused by shifts in confidence, which in turn influences supply and demand of different characters, with the metric used being people who support them to be the strongest. The underlying influence for all of these is fights within luckism, meaning the stock market changes rapidly every week. Although smaller influences on this can be YouTubers videos, Redditors, or even yourself and your opinion on Discord. Fake stocks, otherwise known as agendas, are certain viewpoints that certain members of the community attempt to spread, could be one person or a group of people, in order to paint a character or even an arc in a more positive light. Yeah, stocks don't only apply to characters. The stock market, when it comes to any sort of ongoing fictional or non-fictional piece of media, applies to a vast array of different story elements. So what exactly are agendas? Well, as explained before, an agenda is a certain viewpoint that a certain person or group of people try to spread about an element of a story to paint them in a better light. The prerequisites for spreading an agenda agenda for a character may vary. In some cases, spreading this agenda would require it to take place before any further feats of this character are shown. In order for, let's say, someone like me to spread an agenda about Gite being stronger than James Lee, this would require me to use certain statements such as the Gong Soap statement as well as his narrative portrayal as a training partner or even mentor to James Lee and being the son of Gap Yong Kim, a contender for the strongest man in the verse, before any feats of Gite are actually shown. Now this makes denying Gite being stronger than James Lee much more difficult as since no feats have been shown and we can only rely on his narrative portrayal, the Gita agenda will spread much faster and more efficiently even if it's not necessarily credible. However, in order to spread a certain agenda about a character, them having no feats is by no means an obligatory requirement. As Greeno explained previously, stocks for a character may rise based on mere statements that a prominent figure in the community makes. I'd like to take Johan Siong as an example. Johan is a character who, in the hunt for gun arc, gained a massive upscale in power due to his newly developed infinite copy technique, which allows him to throw a seemingly infinite number of strikes at a person by simply moving his limb. Now, what am I getting at here? Well, a technique of this kind being used against someone like Gun, who a notable part of the fanbase would argue was weakened in his fight with Johan, raises a lot of questions on where exactly Johan Seong should be placed in terms of his power ranking in comparison to other characters in the story. And this is exactly what creates a perfect opportunity for a different prominent figures of the Lucasm community, as I mentioned earlier, to spread their own agenda surrounding someone like Johan Seong, for example, whether they truly believe in them or not. And the reason I mention prominent figures specifically and not just anyone in the fanbase is because the larger the audience that this individual has garnered, it becomes less difficult for them to spread an agenda because people view them as a more credible source due to them having a large following. Let's take Tekadan as an example. Look at him's biggest TikToker, and I'm not too familiar with the power scaling scene, but I'd say he's definitely one of the most famous, if not the most famous, figure in the power scaling scene of Lukism. He's been spreading his agenda on Johan Seong ever since he's unlocked his new infinite copy technique. Now, of course, him saying Johan Seong is top one in the verse does throw a lot of hate his way because naturally people will disagree with what you say no matter what you say in this community and pretty much any community in general. Now, being the most followed TikToker in the Lukism space doesn't just come spontaneously. Tekka has earned his spot for being, whether you hate him or not, an undeniably good debater. So him making a take like Johan Seong being the strongest in Lukism will already get a part of his audience to believe in him. And if he were to, let's say, put his debating skills to use, and beat someone in a debate regarding the Johan Seong topic, this would garner an even larger audience believing the same take, which makes his agenda spread quicker and quicker. I think I've yapped enough about this for now. Now I would sit here and tell you all about which characters have varying stocks in the series, from low stocks to high stocks. However, I think I know someone who could do that better than me. Hey guys, Drolik here. I occasionally make videos on Lookism, and today I am joining in on this collab, and I'm gonna introduce some characters in Lookism of whom have both high and low stocks, and finish it off with some characters that I believe will rise in stocks later later on in the series. Starting with low stocks, first person will have to be Vinjin. During his fight with Taejin, people, me included, were hyping this man up so hard only for him to get absolutely bit. Granted, Taejin and Vin haven't fought anyone other than themselves, so they're kind of unscalable. But even then, the degree Vin was dogged on put his stocks in the gutter. Second low stock is Gu. My man had so many glazers until the recent chapter. Some people were even saying Gu with a weapon was top 3 ever, above gun, which is crazy work, but as of current, we can safely say this is untrue. He got demolished by 
by a gun who almost soloed the entire cast of Lookism and looked like he was going to die to a slight gust of air. For the last low stock, I'm going to have to mention Logan Lee. This man is a confirmed fraud in the story. He got destroyed by all of Allied and literally did nothing. He had pretty decent hype at the start of Worker's Arc, only to not even result in an actual battle. I'm pretty certain he's being set up for a power-up on return, though. Moving on to high stocks, we have quite a few. Starting off, we have UI Daniel, who has literally never directly lost. He has always been stated as peak averse and even shows it too. Jin Young even compared his strength to Gapriong, the current undisputed strongest, but more than just statements, he dominates every fight he's in. The only time he's even remotely struggled was against Gu, and this is because he just straight up passed out. Gun is another character who has never really dominated in a fight, except for against UI Daniel, but even then we see how he never truly got to go all out. This man soloed the entire verse of Lookism, basically, and as soon as he used his most recent form, dominated Gu. Gun alone made so many people look fraudulent. He arguably has the highest stocks in Lookism as of current. Johan's stocks are pretty much gained solely from the most recent fight, as Johan developed a style that is completely unpredictable and almost took down Gun. If it weren't for him randomly passing out, this always happens in Lookism. But regardless, this puts him at an insanely high tier. For the final character with high stocks, it would have to be Gitai. Every time this man is mentioned or shown on screen, he is always an absolute menace and has shown through more than just statements that he's a goat. He just shows up to fight Ji Chang, almost kills him within 30 seconds, and leaves because of the police showing up, of whom he escapes after killing. He is said to be a force similar in strength to James Lee, and even mentor James Lee. Moving on to who I think will gain a rise in stocks through the story. I'm gonna have to start with bloodline man Jake Kim. Due to the sheer fact that he is a son of Gabriel, he is guaranteed to be a permanent top tier. This can be very evidently seen in the Samuel vs. Jake fight, where even though Jake was getting his ass beat the whole fight, his bloodline came inside of him and let him one-shot Samuel for no reason other than his bloodline. Secondly, I'm gonna have to go with Vinjin. Pretty much the same reason as Jake Kim, it's the bloodline curse. As soon as I saw that panel of Mujin being stated equal to Gabriel, I knew it was 1000% to upscale Vinjin in the future or make him have a sensical rapid growth, I guess. But yeah, I'm gonna say Vin will be an absolute top tier at the end of the series. This next one's the most obvious, of which being Little Daniel. Little Daniel is probably the most cracked base fighter in lookism, potential-wise. He has UI, copy talent, the adaptive thinking showed against Gun, James, Ji Cheng. He's also confirmed to be the nephew of Jin Young, a Gen Zero. Noticing a trend here? That's because there is. Bloodline is the best way to determine how stocks work. If fucking Du Li was confirmed to be a Yamazaki, I promise you he would be a top tier. The final person I'll have to give stocks to is Lineman. He is currently being set up to have an insane comeback slash training arc, uh, as he is the person being trained by a Gen Zero from Gaprion's gang, Bong Jai Choi. Wait, no, <laughs> Bong Jai Choi, Bong Gai Choi, I don't know how it's said. This alone makes me think he'll probably rival Jake on his return, or be similar, or even stronger.